welcome back. If you were here last week, you already know where this video is going. It's the second part of my phone soap review. We split this off because the first one ran a little bit long, but in the first video, it went over the dimensions, the size, the capacity, and the high-level capabilities of the Phone Soap Pro, but it also went over Phone Soap's entire product lineup, talking about the different variations to see which ones really fit your use case. If you want to see that video and get an understanding of the overview of that product and some of the specifications, check the video in the annotation because that will run over that. This video is predominantly around the experiment to validate Phone Soap's claims on their website. So we have a little, we've had a little experiment running for a week and today we'll see the results. But before we get into any of that sort of stuff, let's get into the technology that lives with inside the Phone Soap and understand why it should work. The Phone Soap Pro sports four UVC lights, which is the source of its germ killing powers. However, you may be wondering, what is UVC and why is that important? Well, first we gotta talk about ultraviolet in general. Ultraviolet is usually associated with bad things to our skin, and that's with good cause because exposure to ultraviolet rays is the main cause for skin cancer, or at least a major cause for skin cancer. When we're talking about things like skin cancer and skin exposure, we really start talking about the ozone layer and its ability to absorb the different types of ultraviolet rays. And its success in absorption really comes down to wavelength. The longer the ray, the harder it is to absorb. So UVA is the longest waveform and usually what is getting to our skin when we go out. And it's the reason why we wear protection when we go to sunny places or vacation. And it's just because it's not fully absorbed by the ozone layer. So it hits us and then it affects us at a subdermal level. And that means under the skin. So it does break up the DNA that's associated with our skin. And that's the reason why you get a lot of different skin diseases. UVB, however, is shorter than UVA and is mostly absorbed by the ozone layer by the time it hits your skin. So there are some waves that get to us, but it's lesser the reason than UVA. When we're talking UVC waves, that's the shortest form on the spectrum. And that's the reason why it's absorbed by the ozone and it really never reaches us. However, when used in a surface, it has a germicidal effect because it breaks up the DNA of bacteria. So that's the reason why it's used in medical facilities and hospitals, because it's able to keep everything very sterile and really a low power and low cost situation once you have that ray. The other benefit there is that it doesn't require any sort of application. It's just an insert and exposure to that light to get a sterile instrument. While things like alcohol wipes do have some risk of it having to dry or it being wet. So those wet solutions do provide some germicidal effects and they are proven to be pretty effective. However, because it's exposing them to liquid and it could leave residue on your actual instrument, the UVC light is a better way to do that sterilization. So learning more about the ultraviolet gives us an understanding that there's the technology behind it. There's some scientific backing and use cases saying that UVC light exposure should make phone soap work the way that they purport. We gotta check it. So let's do an experiment, hey, hey. For this experiment, you wanna wash your hands and glove up whenever possible. Ideally, you would switch gloves between your pre-samples and your post-samples just to prevent any sort of cross-contamination. But any times you can change your gloves, obviously you will yield a better result. In order to keep the surfaces exposed and making sure that there's no cross-contamination in this experiment, we will be separating my phone and my case. As for the water that you'll be using to collect the samples with, distilled water is the recommendation here. Spring water and tap water obviously have bacteria and will skew your results, so distilled water will be what you'll be using for your Q-tips. And as we get to those cotton swabs, we do need to ensure that they are sterile. So pre-packaged with uh, sterilization is required here. Again, using normal Q-tips may have bacteria in the packaging. So using something that is individually packaged is the way to go. In terms of the agar plates, there's many ways that you can get them. A lot of people make them themselves, but I don't trust my precision and I'm worried about causing contamination scenarios, so I'm just buying mine from Amazon and having them pre-leveled and all that sort of stuff. So for that kit, I will link it in the description just in case you're like me and kinda lazy. When collecting your samples, you wanna make sure that you're rotating your cotton swab 
and then doing the same motion as you rotate the petri dish when you are actually exposing the sample to the agar. Something that I completely forgot when I was doing this is you'll need a marker or tape in the pen just to do some labels. I got halfway through the experiment and realized I didn't have proper labels on. So don't be like me and make sure that you have that ready. And lastly, you'll just need a box or two to make sure that there's somewhere to store the agar plates and store them away for a week. Now that we knocked out the setup, let's get into the experiment. So looking at those results is pretty interesting because I didn't expect them to grow so much in a week, but also my phone's disgusting. <laughs> That's just basically, basically it. Um, there were some things where you notice where the, the, the post results, especially when it came down to the case, still rendered some bacteria. And I have some hypotheses around that. And basically what those are, are that the phone has a very, you know, solid structure. There's not a very porous and it's a very flat surface because it's built to, to last and it's built to be smooth and built of, you know, it's built of strong materials. However, if you look at my case, there's a lot of spa, soft spongy pieces. There's things with pores in it. So the inside of the case is padded. So obviously there's a sponge. So maybe the light didn't reach it. There's also ridges in it. So maybe certain parts of the inside of the case didn't get full exposure to that light. If you flip over to the back side of my phone, it has wood on it. So there's obviously pores and gaps in between there. And maybe on that first pass of the light, it just didn't get in there. So when I did my sample afterwards, that bacteria got picked up. So there's some variability in there that could be the cause. And lastly, 
in terms of why all that stuff didn't get killed off on the case is potentially I just didn't keep it in there long enough. I did keep it in there for five minutes, like the website said, for the pro should be able to do, but I'm wondering if I left it in there for 10 minutes would be more effective. Again, for the smaller sizes, 10 minutes is the recommended, but for the pro, because there's double the lights, they say that you can do it in five. I'd be interested to see if that would actually, you know, the extended exposure would resolve those problems with what we saw in the case samples. But it did make me think. We have these gross samples of agar. What happens if I throw these into the actual phone pro or phone so pro? Let's see. So on an initial look, these auger plates look about the same. And that makes sense, right? The bacteria has grown pretty significantly and five minutes in the UVC light probably isn't enough to kill all this bacteria. However, I will take pictures of these plates and compare it to the end result of the experiment and see if there's any differences. If there are, I'll cut away. But if we're talking about just regular services of your phone and things inside your house, the Phone Soap Pro seems to be living up to the promises that they put on the website. If you saw from the experiment, it was able to kill all of the bacteria from my phone and most of the bacteria from my case. Again, there are considerations in terms of porousness and sponginess of the material that may need additional passes to actually get into all the different layers of bacteria. However, if you're using this as part of your daily regimen and you're really trying to infuse this in your everyday life, you'll be constantly running passes of the UVC light, so it should be able to get all of those things. Um, so you don't have to worry about bringing in bad juju into the house, or if you're putting something filthy up to your face because your phone will be in a good state. So props to Phone Soap for making a really good product that's easy to recommend, especially in times like this. And again, this is not a promotion or paid promotion by Phone Soap, but I wish it was, and I wish I could get that Go version because, you know, if you want to send me that Go version, I would love it for travel. I would, I would hug it. I would caress it. I would make it mine. Bring it in. But yeah, not a paid promotion, but still something that I value a lot. Really glad I got it as a gift. And it's a recommendation from the heart, something easy that I think that anyone can use and something y'all should check out. The really big problem with phone soap right now is its availability. Good luck. Like, I checked in a few different places. Amazon has mostly third party and it's only for the phone soap three on their website last, this weekend, not even last week, but this weekend, it seemed like everything was sold out. Um, I don't think they have a timeline for their restock, but that'll probably be your biggest challenge with this one is just getting one. Um, but definitely keep your eye out. If you're interested in this, they have a bunch of different variations as I showed in my first video, but um, definitely saw a company that I back and proof of. So if you like this video, I hope it was informative. <laughs> I know it's long and I apologize for the two part series here. Uh, I don't like leaving those cliffhangers, but it just had to be done to make it more bite sized But if you liked it, please like it, leave a comment, subscribe, do all the things that you like and love on a video, and I'll see you next time. Ah, oh, I appreciate you. <laughs>